Well, that is, uh, to me, utterly bizarre and fascinating. And why I'm does not, anybody put up with that? Right. I'm not saying all, no, all I've Indian immigrants are this I've way. I'm just saying you look at the roster of you know who's leading the programs, you know, the endless number of programs where they talk about diversity and racism and all the racism that people have to encounter and medicine and how racist medicine is and all this. And you see these brown faces or you see these Asian faces and you think, I mean, literally you think, so you're coming from your country, which you're implying it has you know, a is equal or system. better than our country. <laughs> literally. And you're telling us how awful we are. Well, what's the explanation for that? China's an ethno state, by the way, which of no course. one ever says. It's about the Han Chinese. And if you're not, that's, that's the problem with the Uyghurs. That's their religion. They're not Han Chinese. Whatever. I'm not even judging. I'm just saying people from there have no right to judge the United States. But they, they very much feel that they do. And so take, you know, the Brahmin women who come from India and they climb the ladder. They get the best education. We give them every opportunity. And they turn around and lead the charge on, on we're, we're racist, we're an awful country, we need reform, our medical system need, needs reform. Well, here's the problem. They're taught that they are better than everybody else because they are Brahmin elites. And yet, on some level, their country is a shithole. Excuse my language. No, it's, yeah. Okay, it, it's not providing them with the opportunities that they feel that they deserve and which in many cases they, they do deserve. They come here and they see that we have this wonderful developed scientific and medical establishment, which they haven't managed to create. Uh, they realize that, you know, we've outgunned and outclassed them in practically every way. And what do they feel? Well, they're a very proud people. They're a shame culture and they feel anger. They feel envy. They feel shame. I think the role of, of envy and shame in the way that the third world regards the first world is underestimated. I think you're exactly right. I think you're exactly right. It's never right. talked about. No, and you've been um, really penalized for talking about it. And it so creates ingratitude of the most monstrous kind. I feel like asking some of these people, like, why did you leave your country? Why are you here? Um, I Have am, you asked that? Uh, well, it would be considered not just a microaggression, Tucker. It would be considered a macroaggression. You don't ask people that sort of thing. Why? Well, I, I mean, if you're, I would. If you're born I here, would, you have but... absolutely a right to say, you know, I think most Americans have complicated feelings about immigration. I'm speaking for myself, but like you, my best friend's an immigrant who I godfather my first child. I mean, I really love, there are a lot of impressive Immigrants much more impressive than I am, and I think everyone's for that. But part of the deal is, you know, you don't show up in someone else's country and, like, start attacking them, right? I mean, that's just bad manners. Why can't you say that? Yeah, no, I, I think that's a very valid point. And I'm not, I'm not talking about all immigrants. No, I, I get think it. No, I think... I think I, what I'm amazed at is, you know, how some of the people in the leadership class behave and how they get away with it and how no one well, that's really what calls it, them that's on. What it, that's what it is. And it does feel like, yeah, because, I mean, I know, uh, yeah, I know an awful lot of the kind of people you're talking about and, like, all the ones I know, like, love America, you know, more than many Americans do, including my best friend, who's, like, the most patriotic person I've ever met. But, but 